All right, um, today we're going to go over the solving inequalities and compo compound inequalities inequalities worksheet that's like uh, the salmon packet so remember the big thing for uh, this section is instead of equal sign we had uh, inequality symbols this one is a less than we have greater than less than or equal to greater than or equal to we're still going to solve it the same way we're still going to say okay you're going to use PEMDAS in reverse so you're going to start at the bottom work your way up addition gets rid of subtraction and vice versa division gets rid of multiplication vice versa Right? Remember, we use PEMDAS with one variable. And the big thing we talked about, guys, was the rule. The rule says if you multiply if you multiply or divide by a negative number you flip the inequality. All right, so that's the big thing we had to remember was that rule. Also, guys, this was an open dot on our number line. This was a closed dot. All right. <clears throat> All right, number one, we have 2x plus 9 is less than 16. Remember, first thing you have to do is if you're lost, I better see PEMDAS on your paper. All right, if you tell me you don't know what you're doing, I better at least see PEMDAS in reverse. There is no subtraction, there's addition. That's why I subtract 9 from both sides. I get 2x is less than 7. All right, got rid of the addition, there's no division. Oh, there's multiplication, I have to divide by 2, divide by 2. So x is less than 7 halves. You're probably going to write 3 and a half or 3.5. So that's good. Now, this is just a guideline. This is in our answer. To have our answer, we actually have to make our number line. All right, and I'm going to put three and a half on my number line. So there's three, there's four. So three and a half is in the middle. And I'm going to put an open dot and I'm going to shade to the left because it's less than. If your variable is on the left, then you just points which way you got to shade. So I'm going to shade this way. All right, you always put an arrow at the end of your shaded region. That's telling me that it goes forever. Um, the arrow I put on your on your actual worksheet, that says the number line goes forever, not necessarily the shaded region that you made. Now, to test your work, you have to pick a number on your on your, in your shaded region. So I'm going to pick 3. All right, I'm going to pick 3. I'm going to say, is 2 times 3 plus 9, is that less than 16? That's a question mark. I don't know if that's true. 2 times 3 is 6. 6 plus 9 is 15. 15 is less than 16. That means it's good. All right, this is good. That's the good region. All right, we should always shade the good region. All right, if I put in 4, it wouldn't work. All right, number 2, we have 10 minus x is greater than or equal to 3. I'm going to get rid of the 10 first, so I subtract 10 from both sides. I get the opposite of x is greater than or equal to negative 7. To get rid of the negative in front, I, multi I divide by negative 1. Now remember, when I divide by a negative... I have to flip the inequality. All right, so when I divide by a negative, I have to flip the inequality. So this was this was the greater than or equal to. Now it's less than or equal to. X stays on the left, turns into positive seven. Okay, so it's x less than or equal to seven. I make my number line. I put 7 on my graph. I always like to put 0 on my graphs. I usually do. Sometimes I forget, but usually I do. And now it's a closed circle because there's a bar underneath there. It says less than or equal to, so I shade this way. All right. Now, I'm going to pick a number in my shear region, 0. So I could say 10 minus 0 is greater than or equal to 3. That's a question mark. I don't know if that's true. Is 10 greater than or equal to 3? Yes, it is. All right. So that's a good... Number three, we have 7x minus 12 is less than 8. <clears throat> I'm going to add 12 to both sides to start. I get 7x is less than 20. I got to get rid of the multiplication, so I divide by 7. I divide by 7. I get x is less than... Now, 20 and 7, do not give me a rounded decimal. Just put 2 and 6 sevenths. That's really close to 3. Or we, we can graph that. Make my number line. There's... We'll put 0... There's 2, there's 3, so 
two and six sevenths is right there. It's an open dot, and I'm going to shade to the left. Your number lines don't have to be perfect, guys. They just have to be. I just have to be able to understand what they look like or what they're supposed to mean. Okay, mine's not super neat, but I can tell. And actually, I don't really like my circle, so I'm gonna do that again. There we go. Two and six sevenths. It's less than. Zero is in my shaded region, so I'm going to check, check, check zero. Is negative 12 less than 8? Yes, it is. We're good to go. All right, number four. That's going to be one of the accuracy problems because it's a typo. So I don't know what you guys picked in class, so that's why it's one of the accuracy problems. I forgot the inequality, so you have to add one of these four. You have to add one of those four. And then you put whatever number you want. That's it. All right, number five, we have 4x plus 5 is greater than 25. All right, I'm going to get rid of the 5 first, so I must subtract 5 from both sides. I get 4x is greater than 20. Divide by 4, divide by 4, x is greater than 5. Make my number line. I put 5 on my number line, I put 0 on my number line. Open circle because five, there's no bar there. It's greater than, so I shade to the right. For my test point, I'm going to pick 6. So I'm going to plug in 6. 4 times 6 plus 5, is that greater than 25? Is 24 plus 5 greater than 25? Well, is 29 greater than 25? You remember, these are all questions. And yes, it is. So that's good. Right, moving on. All right, so number 6 is 7 minus n is greater than or equal to 19. I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides. I get the opposite of n is greater than or equal to 12. To get rid of the negative sign, I have to divide by negative 1, divide by negative 1. Remember, that's our rule. If you divide by a negative, you have to flip the inequality. So I'm going to flip this. I'm going to flip this inequality. It was greater than or equal to, now it's less than or equal to. So I have n is less than or equal to negative 12. I make my number line. Put negative 12 on there. There's 0. All right, it's less than. Remember, it's a closed circle because there's a line underneath. I'm going less than. Boom. So there's my shaded region. I'm going to pick negative 13. So I say 7 minus negative 13. Is that greater than or equal to 19? Well, 7 minus negative is plus, so is 20 bigger than or equal to 19? It's true. It's good to go. That's it for 6. 7 is 1 half x minus 4 is greater than negative 6. If you hate the fraction right away, you can multiply everything by 2. Um, I'm just going to add 4 to start. So I get 1 half x is greater than negative 2. Um, to get rid of my fraction, I'm going to multiply by 2 on both sides. That gives me positive x is greater than negative 2. I didn't flip the inequality because I multiplied because that's positive. Even though my final answer was negative, I still only multiply both sides by the positive. So it stays the same way. I make my number line, there's negative 2, there's 0, um, it's an open circle, it's greater than, so I shade to the right, because look, the variable's on the left, it's pointing to the right, so that tells me where to shade. So I could pick 0 to see if my answer is correct, so I pick 0, 1 half times 0 is 0, so negative 4 is greater than negative 6, yes it is, and that's it for 7. 8, we have 3 half x minus 7 is less than 2. Um, to get rid of the fraction, I, have to, I could multiply everything by 2 to start. Uh, I'm not going to do it now. I'm just going to add 7, add 7. I get 3 halves x is less than 2. And I could multiply by 2, but I'm just going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 2 thirds. And that 2 thirds is positive, so it's um, those cancel. I get x is less than 4 thirds, or 1 and a third. Make my number line. There's 0, there's 1, there's 2, so 1 and a third is right there. And it's an open circle, and it's less than, so I shade this way. This means 0 should work. So I'm going to plug in 0. Um, 0 minus 7 is minus 7, is less than 2. Is that true? Yes, it is. All right, good. So that's it for 8. That's the first page. All right, number 9, we have 5 plus 1 third n is less than or equal to 6. 
Um, I'm going to get rid of the minus five, or the five first by subtracting five from both thirds, so I get one third n is less than or equal to uh, one. To get rid of the th one third, I'm going to multiply by three. I get n is greater than or equal to three. Make my number line. I have three on there. I like to put zero on there. I like to put a closed circle because there's a line underneath and it's greater than, so I shade to the right. Um, four would be a good number to check, so I'm going to plug in four. Actually, I'm going to plug in six, and you'll find out why I'm plugging in six, because when I plug in six, one-third times six is less than or equal to six. Um, I get seven is less than or equal to six. Okay? Is that true? Yes, it is. And that's it. All right, I did do 10 in class, but in case you weren't paying attention, there's two variables. I have to get those variables on the same side, so I add x to both sides. I have 5x minus 1 is greater than 14. Now it looks like a problem we've done before on the first 9, so I add 1 to both sides. I get 5x is greater than 15. Divide by 5, divide by 5. x is greater than 3. Here's my number line. I put 3 on there. I put 0 on there. It's an open circle. It's greater than, so I shade this way. And I'm going to check 4. 4 times 4 is 16. 16 minus 1 is 15. Greater than or equal to 14 minus 4 is 10. Is that true? Yes, it is. Number 11, same concept. I always move the smaller end, so I have the opposite. I have negative end here, so I add end to both sides. I get minus 6 is less than or equal to 8n plus 4. I'm going to subtract 4 from both sides. I get negative 10 is less than 8n. I divide everything by 8. I get n. I get negative 5 fourths or negative 1 and a fourth is less than n. Now guys, personally, I like to put the n on the left. So when I put the n on the left, I write n. I write negative 1 and a fourth. And then the Pac-Man guy is eating n. So he keeps on eating it. This is rewriting it. It's not flipping because, look, the Pac-Man guy, the Pac-Man guy, he's still eating in. He was eating in here. He's still eating in. So even though it looks flipped, it's not really flipped. Make my number line. There is 0. There is negative 1. There is negative 2. So negative 1 fourth is right there. Open circle. It's greater than, so I shade this way. This means 0 should work. So I'm checking 0. 0 minus 6. So I have minus 6. Is that less than plus 4? It is. So I, mean, I'm, I am good to go. All right, that's it for 11. All right, number 12. I have 2 times the quantity n minus 4 is less than or equal to 6. So I have to distribute. So if you're not sure what to do, guys, you have to distribute because that makes it 2n minus 8 less than or equal to 6. Now it looks like something I've done before. I add 8 to both sides. I get 2n is less than or equal to 14. Divide by 2, divide by 2, I get n is less than or equal to 7. Make my number line. I put 7 on there. Put 7 on my number line. Close circle. Remember, I like having 0 on my number line. I'm going to shade to the left because that's the way the arrow points because the variables on the left, I can use that shortcut. Zero is on my uh, shaded region, so I'm going to check zero. Two times zero minus four, less than or equal to six. I get negative eight, less than or equal to six. And that is true, yes. So that's it for 12. 13 is the same exact concept. I'm going to distribute the two. I get two times four is eight, minus x is greater than eight. I subtract eight from both sides. I get the opposite of x is greater than zero. Now here's where it gets tricky. I still have to divide by negative 1, and this is super important because I'm dividing by a negative. Which means I have to flip that, even though it's not going to change my answer because 0 over top of anything is automatically 0. But I have to flip it because it's going to change how my, my shaded region is going to be. So this is super important. X is less than 0. Make my number line and put 0 in the middle. It's an open circle. I shade to the left, not the right. So 
This is a good one if you didn't check to check it because I'm going to check negative 2. So I'm going to put negative 2 in for x. 2 times 4 minus negative 2. Is that greater than 8? 4 minus negative 2 is the same as 6. So 2 times 6 is greater than 8. That means 12 is greater than 8. And that's true. So yes, it's good. If you would have picked positive 2, it would not have worked. So if you would have forgot to flip your inequality, you would have made a mistake there. All right, number 14. We, the, the difference between number 14 and number 13 is there's just multiple variables. So I still distribute first. I still, 4 is the pizza delivery guy. He's going to drop a pizza. So I'm going to have 5 minus 5x five is greater than 12 minus 4x. Now, guys, like I said, I always like to move the smaller of the two. So I'm going to add 5x to both sides because I would rather owe somebody $4 than owe them $5. I get 5 is greater than 12 plus just 1x. Now I have to subtract 12 from both sides. I get negative 7 is greater than x. Now I'm going to rewrite this. So I'm going to rewrite it. This is not flipping it because... When I write x and negative 7, the, negative, the Pac-Man guy is eating negative 7. He keeps on eating negative 7, so I didn't flip the inequality. I just put it on the left because that gives me the shortcut to shade. I put negative 7 on my graph. I put 0 over here. It's an open circle. I shade to the left because it's getting smaller, which means I'm going to check negative 8. So I say 5 minus 5 times negative 8. Is that greater than 4? times 3 minus 8, negative 8. So five, negative 5 times negative 8 is positive 40, so I have 5 plus 40. Is that bigger than 3 minus negative 8? I have 4 times 11, so I have 45. Is that bigger than 44? And that's true. Yes, it is. So we're good on 14. 15 is an actually easier version of 14 because there is no... Uh, there's no parentheses. So the first thing I do is I just get all the x's on one side. I get 1 is less than or equal to 4x minus 1. I add 1 to both sides. I get 2 is less than or equal to 4x. I divide by 4, divide by 4. I get 1 half is less than or equal to x. Now I'm going to rewrite this. I'm going to write x first and then 1 half. And Pac-Man guy's eating x, so he's going to keep on eating x. I'm going to make my number line. There's 0. There's 1. So there's 1 half. It's a closed circle. It's greater than, so it goes to the right. 1 would be a great thing to pick. So I'm going to plug in 1 and see if it works. 2 times 1 plus 1. Is that less than or equal to 6 times 1 minus 1? 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 is 2 or 3. So I get 3. Is that less than or equal to 6 minus 1 is 5? And that's a true statement. Yes, it is. So we're good to go on 15. All right, 16. Just like number 15, we have variables on both sides. I have 2x plus 3 is less than 4x minus 7. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides because that's a smaller one. I get 3 is less than 2x minus 7. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. I get 10 is less than 2x. Divide by 2, divide by 2. I get 5 is less than x. I'm going to rewrite it. So that's my rewrite. I'm not flipping it. It looks like I'm flipping it. I write x and 5. Pac-Man guy is eating x. He keeps on eating x. I do this so when I make my number line, it tells me which way to shade. So I put 5 right here. I'll put 0 over here. It's an open circle. You shade to the right. 6 would be a great number to check. If I plug in 6, I get 2 times 6, which is 12, plus 3. I get 15 is less than. 4 times 6 is 24. 24 minus 7 is 17. Is 15 less than 17? Yes, it is. All right. So that's it for 16. Looks good. All right. And versus or. And it's a little bit more difficult because you have to break up the inequality by writing the middle twice. Remember, you don't change the middle, so you're never going to change it. That's the most common mistake. Remember, you should have no arrows, zero arrows, all right, because... Your graph's going to be running into each other, so they should look, it should look something like that. Right? Now, or, you're going to see the word or. It's going to have two arrows. They're going to be going opposite directions. So before you start, you should have an idea of what your graph's going to look like. All right, so this is an and because the word or is not there. So I take x minus 7, I write it twice. I say x minus 7, and 
x minus 7. Now I just say negative 2 less than or equal to less than or equal to 11. I just solve them both individually. So I just add 7 to both sides. I get 5 less than or equal to x. And I like to rewrite it, so I'm going to put x is greater than or equal to 5. Over here, same exact thing. That's the good thing about and inequalities is you almost always follow the same steps. So I x is less than or equal to 18. Make my number line. I want to have 5 and 18 on my number line. They're both closed circles because both of those are less than or equal to. All right. I shade inside, and I stop at 18. I shade this way. I shade to the right, and then I stop. I look at 18. It says shade to the left. All right. So this is my answer right there. To check it, I'm going to check, I don't know, 6. I'm going to plug in 6. Negative 2. Less than or equal to 6 minus 7 is negative 1. Less than or equal to 11. Is negative 2 less than or equal to negative 1? Yes. Is negative 1 less than 11? Yes. So this is the good. This is good. All right. 18, exact same concept. I'm going to take this middle. I'm going to write that twice. I'm going to say 3x minus 4. 3x minus 4. I like to put a little and in the middle to remind myself because it's an and problem. So I say negative 16 less than or equal to, less than or equal to 2. I solve them the same exact way. I add 4 to both sides. So I get negative 12 less than or equal to 3x. That means I divide by 3, divide by 3. I get negative 4 less than or equal to x. And I'm going to rewrite it. x is greater than or equal to negative 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. Look, first step, exactly the same. I get 3x is less than or equal to 6. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. Look, second step, exactly the same. That's the good thing about and inequalities. A lot of times you end up with the same exact steps. So now I have 2 and negative 4. So I want 2. There would be 0. We'll say negative 4 is over here. They're both closed circles because both of them are less than or equal to. And so I'm going to shade it in. I go to the right because negative 4 is greater than. I go to the left because 2 is less than or equal to. All right, now I'm going to check 0. So when I plug in 0, I get negative 16 less than or equal to um, negative 4 less than or equal to 2, and that's true. So we're good to go. All right, so 19, same exact concept. It's an and because there is no word or, so I'm going to put negative 2n in the middle twice. So I'm going to say negative 2 less than negative 2n plus 1. There's the middle once. Didn't change it. I'm going to take that middle again. So I'm going to say and negative 2n plus 1 less than or equal to 7. There's the middle of the second time. Did not change it. I subtract 1 from both sides. I get negative 3 less than negative 2n. I subtract 1 from both sides. I get negative 2n less than or equal to 6. Now, I'm going to divide by negative 2. Now, because that's negative, I have to flip this. So that's greater than. So I get negative 3 over negative 2. It's positive 1 and a half. It's greater than n. Now I'm going to rewrite it. So I'm going to put n on the left. Pac-Man guy is eating 1 and a half, so it's less than 1 and a half. I'm going to have divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2. I get n, and because it's negative, I'm going to flip it to greater than or equal to negative 3. So I'm going to make my graph. I'm going to have 1 and a half. I'm going to have negative 3. I'm going to put an open dot at 1 and a half because there is no line. I'm going to put a closed dot at 3. Look, I have different dots. All right. I'm going to shade to the right because it's greater than or equal to negative 3. I'm going to shade to the left because it's less than or equal to 1 fourth. And there we go, that's 19. All right, now with or, I already know that I think the arrows are going to go like that. But it's not going to be as easy to, they're not going to be the exact same steps to solve because they're two different problems. So I subtract 10 from both sides, I get 3x is less than negative 12. Divide by 3, divide by 3, I get x is less than negative 4. All right, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. I get 2x is greater than 0. Divide by 2, divide by 2. 
If I take nothing, I divide it in half. I still have nothing, so x is greater than 0. So I make my number line. Let's put negative 4, put 0. I'll put 2 over here, too. I don't care. Um, they're both open circles because neither one of them have bars. It's less than negative 4, so I shade to the left. It's greater than 2. or zero. Ooh, I almost messed up. I put my circle at the wrong spot. Remember, this circle is supposed to be at 0. Shade to the left, and it's greater than 0. There we go. Now, I'm going to check, I don't know, negative 2, because that's a number that's not in the region. This should be bad. So when I plug in negative 2 to both, it shouldn't work in either. So 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. Three times negative two is negative six. Negative six plus two is negative four. Is negative four less than negative ten? No. All right. Two times negative two minus four is that greater than negative four? Two times negative two is negative four minus four. Is negative eight greater than negative four? It's not. So that's right. Neither one of these are bad. So I did actually check it. So that's actually checking it. I like checking the or like that, so I don't have to check both shaded regions. All right. 21, I have x minus 1 is less than or equal to 5 minus 10. And remember, that's supposed to be x plus 3, not equal sign. x plus 3 is greater than 10. All righty, do this first. Just do 5 minus 10 to give you negative 5. So I have x minus 1 is less than or equal to negative 5. Then I add 1 to both sides. I get x is less than or equal to negative 4. I have minus 3 from both sides. I get x is greater than 7. There, we're done. All right, so don't let, don't let that 5 minus 10 freak you out in the original problem. Make your number line. I have 7, I have negative 4, and I'll throw a 0 right here. Um, the left one is a closed circle, the right one is open. I go to the right of 7 because it's greater than, the arrow is pointing to the right. I go to the left of negative 4 because it's, it's less than. Now 0 is going to be my test point. 0 is supposed to be bad. So if I plug in 0, it shouldn't work for either one. So I plug in 0 on the left. I get 0 minus 1, that's negative 1, is less than or equal to 5 minus 10, which is negative Oh, I messed up, I think. Nope, I didn't mess. 5 by 10 is negative 5. Negative 1 is less than or equal to negative 5. Nope. Plug in 0. 0 plus 3. 3 is supposed to be greater than 10. And that's not true. Since they're both not true, it is bad. And that's what we wanted. All right, that's good for 21. So once again, because I see the word or, I know this is an or inequality. I subtract 2 from both sides. I get x is less than or equal to 3. I add 4 to both sides. Notice there are different steps. X is greater than 6. Number line, here's 3, here's 6. I'll put 0 right here just for, because I like having 0 on my graph. It's a closed dot at 3, open dot at 6. It goes to the right of 6 because it's greater than. The left of 3 because it's less than. And that looks right. Now I'm going to check 4. 4 should give me something that's bad. Remember, I want something that's bad because that's... It's, that's one region, okay? I don't have to test two different regions. So I'm going to throw in 4. 4 plus 2, is that less than or equal to 5? Is 6 less than or equal to 5? No, it's not. 4 minus 4, that's supposed to be greater than 2. Is it? 4 minus 4 is 0. Is 0 greater than 2? No, it's not. All right, so that's, that's exactly what we wanted. It's bad. That's it.